Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nano Is It Done? I remain your host, Shadow Fury333, and this next match is going to be between a Ball of Doom and Orphelius on Sever, which I actually hadn't seen before. It looks so cool! Sorry, it just does, especially when like, you're zooming out and, and it's like. Because this is water, it's reflecting. Actually, it looks like an oil painting almost. But yeah, it's just water. But still, it looks so cool. I've never seen this map before. I mean, I think it's Lucky Waldo that did it. I like well the moose. I have to double check who did this one. One sec. I'm sorry. I th it was the yak. It was Moose's Loose. Okay, cool. Yeah, so Moose's Loose did this because Moose's Loose does a lot of really pretty maps. And it looks so cool. I'm curious how it plays. Just looking at it, it looks like it doesn't have the same terrain problems as Zed. Zed had some issues where it was basically impossible for anything other than bots to really get around freely, and vehicles had to go through the snaking path, and that was it. This one doesn't seem to have quite the same level of terrain difference, so I don't know if vehicles would even have that additional path. Maybe here. I'd have to see. It looks like no one is... Yeah, shield bots for Orphelius, Ball of Doom, going again for gunships. Ball of Doom really likes the gunships, apparently. Okay, cool. So let's begin. Ball of Doom, as we see with the gunship plant. Going for an another Blastwing into Banshee Rush. Orphelius going for the shield bot factory. Convict opening out with the builders. This is a fairly large map, so that does make sense. It's kind of deceptive, given that there's not a whole lot of terrain changing. Like, it's just one S. But, yeah, I wonder if... Is, is Moose Loose trying to do a bunch of maps based off different letters? Be interesting. Although, I wouldn't really want to see what happens if they try to do W. Though, I think A would be kind of cool. Depending on the kind of A. Because it'd be that bridge in the center. So it wouldn't have this same snaking issue. But W would be probably the worst. Anyway. Orphelius. Clearly getting prepared. I mean, they did see the blast wing. They got rid of the blast wing. They're assuming more is to come. And they're partly right. Banshee's coming in here. And not much here to deal with them. I mean, one Vandal and a Defender. Definitely good against blast wings. Not so useful against Banshees. But still apparently useful enough. I mean, the Banshee's just going for the in under construction metal extractor and being forced away. Ball of Doom playing it safe, and Orphelius is relying on that. Like, Ball of Doom does not want to lose units unnecessarily. Good thing, because, I mean, this is 200, that's 440 metal. It's like 100 metal if you just give it to your opponent. That wouldn't be a good thing to do. Not this early in the game, especially. So Ball of Doom, they're being cautious. Orphelius, I mean, because Ball of Doom is being cautious, Orphelius doesn't have to protect as much. And this is working out beautifully. Although, once again, Ball of Doom with more cheated out expansions. Oh, wow, going to, uh, not quite the natural, but essentially where Orphelius would naturally progress. And double check. Okay, so this area, yeah, it's totally bot path. Well, very open to bots, actually. I'm curious about vehicles. But there are no vehicles on the map at the moment, so I can't really find out. And Orphelia is immediately going for the airplane factory. Good idea. Or at least, probably a good idea. This is still a large map. They're still fighting gunships. They still probably have to deal with the same positional problems that plagued Rar in the last game. So Orphelius, they're probably making a good choice. I. It really will come down to how it works, but this does seem wise. Just because it means Ball of Doom just can't get away with all the stuff they got away with last game. Now, granted, I'm actually doing these in reverse chronological order because it I like the progression of it. So I think this happened... I think this game happened af before. Yeah, it happened before. It actually happened the previous day from the last game. So Orphelius with the airplane factory early on. They got that sorted. And they also had the Vandals off to the side just in case. Just in case Blast Wings come along the side. Just in case anything else. Like Making sure that if anything comes around the side, because the map ends about here. It's a bit hard to tell. If I go underwater, it'll be a bit easier. The map ends, like, here. Like, this line right here. So there's actually a fair amount of space in between. Yeah, it's really hard to tell. Looks cool. A little bit difficult to tell where the edge of the water is. And I don't know if you noticed, just noticed just now... I was going under the water. I am still using CUFC. This is the new CUFC. I can totally go and zoom in and out underwater. No problems. So anyone, anyone who's having problems with that, that's been fixed. 
Total side note, total tangent, but yeah. Zooming in and out of the water works perfectly fine with UFC now. And Ball of Doom just building up. Uh, still kind of cheating it out. I don't think they're aware of the airplane factory yet. They will be. Painfully so, in fact. Although there are Lotuses not being totally naked about the expansions. They're being cautious. Ball of Doom, not going to throw this away. But still, they are everywhere. Ball of Doom is spread out a lot. And this is going to... Well, we'll see if it bites them. Crane's down, but it just got the defender in time. So two defenders are probably too much for the Swiss to deal with. Oh yeah, totally too much for these Swiss to deal with. Orphelius knows this too. But at least they know, oh hey, there's an expansion there. They can get up some thugs. They can deal with that. No big deal. Thugs will tear it apart just fine. Over here though, another crane gone. Once again, the crane dies right as soon as it finishes building the title generator. But hey, Orphelius knows where everything is. This is the important thing. And gets a couple free metal extractors. But yeah, now they have information. That's key. So hopefully when I get a couple thugs or a few bandits and a thug or whatever, they'll be able to go down here to the southeast, take that out. I mean, Ball of Doom, we saw in the last game, their big thing is cheating out expansions and making sure that they hold on to it. Like, getting the economic advantage early and then turning that into a military lead. It's a bit risky, though, because they're right now in the position where they don't have much to support it. Like, they have the economy. They haven't transitioned into military yet. This is the perfect timing for Ophelius to do this. This is a great timing attack. I never really considered... It's hard to really say that 0k has timing attacks in the same way that, say, StarCraft does. But this is probably the closest you can get. When your opponent is transitioning from one heavily focused part of the strategy to another heavily focused part of the strategy, and you're hitting them right then and there. However, this transitioning is starting, though. Ball of Doom is able to get their military going. Their economy is going to be quite threatened, though. Not sure when Orphelius is going to attack it on the ground. Orphelius is still a bit behind economically, but nowhere near as badly as they were. Even getting rid of a couple metal extractors did help. Although the razors will cause problems. The point is, though, it's slowing down the expansion. Ball of Doom knows that they can't get away with naked expansions around the map. They know that they can't... I mean, admittedly, they are trying to proxy something from the looks of it. Oh, just get a razor over here. They know they have to really focus on defense. And there we go. There's Orphelius out with their ground-based army, trying to get rid of the southeast expansion. This should... Hmm. Five bandits against two defenders. That should be okay. Especially with the additional support. Getting rid of that crane. Oh, if they can get rid of the crane before that razor's done. That'll slow things down, I think, enough. Although the problem is the defenders, really. And at this point, rapiers... Oh, rapier versus vandal. Vandal's got a lot of health, but they can't kill the rapiers quickly. Of course, all it did was buy time. Swift's coming in to save the day. Nicely done. So really, Orphelius, relatively small army, but it's a good counterforce. Where the thug and band bandit force go? There's bandits over here. Oh, there they are. They haven't done anything yet. They're just sitting idle. I mean, seriously, these, these forces could attack the southeast. That would get rid of a lot of Ball of Doom's economy. And over to the northwest, I mean... Ball of Doom's managed to rebuild, but those Swifts could just go over to the Northwest, take that out again. I don't think Ball of Doom is... No, they are not building up defenses there at all. So the Northwest is vulnerable again. Not sure if that's going to happen, though. And here we go, main attack. Unfortunately, one of the bandits out of the shield protection, but that's fine. Still five bandits in here with shield protection. Oh, don't go for the dark... Don't go for the Razor. Go for the Lotus. Go for the Defender. Go for the Metal Extractors. Don't go for the Razor. The Razor can wait. The Razor barely even matters, in all honesty. There we go. Southeast freed. And another crane attempting to rebuild. Bit of a bad move there, Ball of Doom. That's going to be one more dead crane. And it looks like these Swifts are going to risk that Razor to get through. Actually, opening up the race is a great idea. And now all Orphelius needs to do is break this thing apart when it's open. Probably won't be able to tear it. Oh, actually, will it? Oh, just barely, yes. Gets rid of the Razor. Southeast is totally freed. Orphelius can actually expand normally now. Finally for them. I mean, really, that's been a lot of work trying to get that set up. And still, there are a lot of vulnerable areas. The Northwest is still fairly vulnerable. Like, Northwest completely. North, or West Center is still pretty vulnerable. The center of the map isn't super vulnerable. Those tridents are going to pose an issue. But still, who cares? That's more money that's not rapiers. That's more money that's not air-to-ground army. And the Swifts are still pretty flexible, although Ball of Doom clearly saw what's happening. Actually, oh, they have no radar! Wow, Ball of Doom has no radar! 
for as spread out as a strategy as they're playing, I am very surprised they have not invested in radar yet. I mean, clearly they managed to see those Swifts coming, but if those Swifts had come over... Actually, yeah, okay, fair enough. I think Ball of Doom does have enough... Well, actually, no, there's an avenue. Like, right here, if they were to just... I should say, if Ophelius went over through this avenue with the planes, they don't think they know about that avenue, but if they figured it out or they just went through that by chance, Ball of Doom would have no idea until this entire expansion was destroyed. And Orphelius with the reclaim on the expansion, all they need to do is get another, either build more air units or just get another caretaker. There we go, another caretaker. Make sure they do not access. Ball of Doom, gone for the spider factory. That is their ground transition. What do they have so far? Venom, two Venoms. That's it. Two Venoms. Third one in production. That could be handy. Like, EMP against shields is typically very powerful, especially the splash of it. Like, that is going to be handy. Problem, however, is whether or not the Venom is going to have enough firepower before they die. Because, yeah, they are going to stun stuff out. But if Porphelius is playing this smart, they micro it well, they should be able to swarm around the Venoms. Hopefully it will be enough. It's still really tough. Getting rid of Venoms without skirmishers is not easy. And I don't think Orphelius has any idea this is happening. They aren't scouting with the Swifts at all. I'm a bit surprised. I mean, not entirely, but I'm a bit surprised they haven't just like taken all their Swifts and actually all their Swifts and like spread out across the entire north side of the map and then returned. Like spread out and then boost back just to get a nice view of whatever's going on. I mean, they lose a few Swifts in the process, but the point is trade Swifts for information. Because if they saw these units coming in, they'd probably build up a pretty large rogue army. Although the thugs... Actually, ooh, Felon. Felon would work as well if the Felon gets in position. And now Ball of Doom having to deal with all this and with the spiders way out of position, the Western Center expansion is totally dead. From here, though, it's going to be a bit tricky. Clearly, Ball of Doom expects that Orphelius is going to the Northwest from here. Now, or Orphelius doesn't have to, but I think what Ball of Doom is thinking is that if Orphelius goes to the Northwest, the gunships will protect it. If they go to the, the Center East... The spiders will protect it. Although now that Orphelius knows about the spiders, are we going to see rogues? And the answer is... Well, actually, we don't know. Ball of Doom going for a crow, though. There's the crow I was looking for last game, although maybe that's why they didn't build it in the last game, because this is prior. This is chronologically earlier than the game we saw previously. But I should say it was played prior to the game we saw previously. Still, felon ball like this. Eesh. I don't really think the spiders have much of a chance. I mean, when you consider the Felon range compared to the Venom range, the Venom is the real threat. And the range of the... What's the range of the Felon? Oh, 430. Yeah, it's double the range of the Venom. The Venoms wouldn't survive it. They're too lightweight. They wouldn't be able to stun anything out in time. Now, of course, the thing is, Ball of Doom still has a stronger economy. Orphelius... They freed up a lot of space, but they haven't... They've taken this area down here. They're taking this east center. They've taken the, the outright center. Not that there's a huge advantage to taking the center, other than there's getting an additional 8 or so metal. It's pretty good. Or 9, I guess, metal. Oh, no, 2.4. That's 10. Well, 7.5 so far. But still, I mean, it's not bad. They're pretty close to parity at this point. And the Venoms are dead. And they've got a good anti air force. I mean, Orphelius has a pretty strong army to deal with this. But, of course, that crow coming in there could just drain out the felon, stop the vandals from really doing anything useful, and then rip everything else apart. This is still a risky play. It's not over yet. Although I do find it a bit curious that the Swifts... I mean, I guess not knowing where the tridents are is a threatening thing, but they do kind of know now, so I don't know why the Swifts aren't going around and just swarming around, because there's a lot of Swifts in product, or that have been produced. 15 Swifts... I could probably get rid of... Oh, no, that's a Razor. Never mind. Okay, fair enough. And unfortunately, the Felon kind of losing its shields. There is a good shield link setup, though. Ah, no, and the Razor takes it out. That is not what is desired. The Felon losing all the shields trying to get rid of a Razor. Bad targeting there. That is a great way to lose a Felon. Like, Felons die as soon as they hit something heavy like that. And Orphelius, at least, is not just felons. They have loads of other units to work with. 
It's not just felons, but they're going to have to take a little while to recharge. And the crow is up, and once again, we're going to have the felon just wasting a bunch of its shots on a unit that's not going to die quickly. And that shield ball, is it going to go down? Ah, the felon's down, the thugs are down, everything is down. Orphelius, however, is accessing at this point. They could easily rebuild that, but they are not building anything. Why are they not building anything, Orphelius? What happened? Why did that happen, Orphelius? Why are you not producing anything? Where's your stuff? Maybe they're just panics? I don't know. But they have so much resources, they're accessing in everything. And they're not producing at all. I don't know what happened. This is the exact opposite of what they want, and yeah, they're totally panicking. And the Swiss are going in, desperately trying to get rid of everything, despite the tridents. I mean, the Crow's taking some damage, but it's maybe half health. Not really a threat. The entire army's been wiped out. Like I said, it could be rebuilt quickly. Orphelius, there we go, with the Shieldbot Factory, rebuilding that. They could have another Caretaker on that, though. They could easily have another Caretaker. And possibly go for more Swifts, just to at least bait open a Razor. Ouch, though, that is painful. Is that an elevation change? Something blew up. I that's... Oh, that is part of the map. Never mind. thought that was terraformed in. But yeah, at this point, Ball of Doom... I mean, they're getting a lot of pressure. Their economy's weaker, but Orphelius right now does not have an army for their economy. Okay, Hawks kind of makes sense. I do think the Swifts are a bit of a better idea just for the missiles to hit and run. Although at this point, a lot of the anti-air has been destroyed. I think the Tridents are... Okay, they're behind lines. A lot of them did die, but... Yeah, okay. It's not bad. But now on top of the crab, like crab on top of the crow, like a strider, pretty much strider class and a demi strider together. This is not an easy thing to fight. But Orphelius pretty much has Ball of Doom contained. Not totally. This area over here is totally is open. I don't know why Ball of Doom isn't trying to harass along this eastern side, but I guess they're. I mean, they don't have radar. Or they do have radar now. Okay, Ball of Doom got radar. They know what's there. I guess they realize it's going to be really hard if they wanted to attack around the side. So yeah, Orphelius has a contain on Ball of Doom. But the thing is, Orphelius, they aren't... Well, they're kind of still producing. I guess they have enough now. They do have enough production going on. But, I mean, it's a contain primarily with static defenses. It's not a contain with much of a military. And down goes another Felon! Ouch! They really don't have that same Felon Ball that they started with. The Crow is not really in a favorable position, though. And honestly, Orphelius' commander could just about rush into the side here and take out the economy from behind. I mean, if that happened, I think Ball of Doom would throw in the towel. Because their crow is stunned at the front lines. They have some spiders, but a good enough commander, like level 3, level 4 commander, would tear this entire area apart. I mean, I'm only saying that because Orphelius' commander is right here, but it's right there, so it might as well. And also, yeah... Or Polaris pointing out, reclaim! It's like 1,200 metal worth of reclaim in the area nearby, and this is not on reclaim, it's on repair, or trying to stop the crow, or stop both crow and crab. But really, crow is an airborne unit, it could go around the side. It could be the one going around the side with a crab holding the line. Bit of a risky strategy, but at this point, Ball of Doom kind of has to play a risky strategy to win. These defenses up front are still getting are still fairly strong. Getting through them is not going to be easy. Racketeers are causing loads of problems. The crow is still what? 22% disarmed? Yeah. Two more racketeer missiles and that's going to be done. Like, that's kind of the problem here. Getting rid of these units. I mean, Orphelius can't easily get in, though, like I said, they have other options. They reclaimed Morph Commander, pushed forward with that. That'd work okay. Risky strategy, but I think in this one situation it would work. And... Hawk's coming in to save the day. Not sure if that will. I mean, got, got rid of the brawlers. That helps. Not gonna get rid of the crow, though. They're gonna die before that crow does. Way before. How many hawks are there? Three right now, but those tridents are not going down to them. I mean, at least the crow has been forced back, but Orphelius' forces cannot do anything. Yeah, at this point, yeah, this is where I'd say, morph the commander! Morph the freaking commander! Or, get a wyvern. I mean, heck, get something that can actually survive long enough. Get rid of Bald Doom's commander. They're doing, that commander's doing all the reclaim. It's massive reclaim commander. 31 build power, yeah, no wonder. 
just would Vern bomb the commander to death because it's only got 3,000 health, like two bombs and it's dead. Get rid of that commander. Get rid of that commander and that's going to be it. The crow will not have any easy repair. Anything else that would repair it would probably be a crane, of which there are none. Yeah, so that's not really an option. So at this point, Orphelius has pretty much let... I mean, we can see Orphelius is let up. I don't think they want to, though. There we go. Baladum taking advantage of this. This is a bit too late for the Orphelius commander thing I mentioned before. That That's not going to happen. It's, it's way too late for that. I mean, these brawlers just stopping everything. And Baladum, I think, might be able to turn this around. Although, this is also the perfect time for Hawks to be built. Because the brawlers are... Well, okay, not quite out of range of the tridents, but there are fewer tridents. Yeah, I mean, the tridents have to be split now. And while the crow is in position, there's still a crane... Ah, still the crab, that's the problem. There's still that crab. A couple racketeers are, racketeers are helping, but not enough. And Swift's coming in too, but Orphelius starting to run low in economy, losing, I mean, they're losing Metal Extractor after Metal Extractor at this point. The army can stay around long enough to get rid of this... Well, not really the Crow. The Crow's not a realistic target. The realistic target would be the Brawler. Get rid of that. Get rid of the... Com oh, even the Commander's kind of getting unrealistic at this point. But I'm still saying, couple of urns. Hard to identify the situation, though. That's one of the hardest things I found in Zero K, is identifying what situation you're in. What should go for? Because I don't know if... Can I really see the commander? Yeah, they don't... They have the commander on radar. They know it's there. They know it's frontline, and they probably figure it's repairing. As I mean, that crow... is taking a decent amount of damage. How many shields are here? How's the shield regenerate right now? Ooh, boy. Yeah, that... Oh, that commander's getting pretty close to the front lines, though. But the problem is two crabs. That's a massive problem, actually, as we just found out. I mean, that's... Yeah, that's not going to work, is it? Oh, boy. And now Brawler's in the center as well. I mean, causing all sorts of grief. Orphilius has not really changed up their strategy at all. Throwing Swiss into the meat grinder. Throwing Thug Fallen... The Thug, thug Outlaw Felon as well. I mean... This commander is pretty much only susceptible to, like, a Wyvern Bomb or a Nuke or something big like that. Not much else. And the container has been basically broken. Ball of Doom can break out of this whenever they'd like. Those Rackers go down, that's it. And our Philly's pointing out Commander Warf would be a stupid idea. In that one situation, it wouldn't have been super stupid. Because taking out this economy line would have... Like, that would have split Ball of Doom a lot. So what the Crow and the Crab would have been separated. That would be the whole point. So you force one back, and then the front line breaks because it doesn't have everything it needs to defend. And then you break it through the front line. The commander's tearing apart the back line, and at that point, Ball of Doom doesn't have enough to deal with it. It's way too late now. It's far too late. That was only for five minutes ago. At this point, no, that's not happening. Commander Morph will be a stupid idea right now. But five minutes ago... Yeah, and then Crow gets off the front lines. If Crow goes to kill the commander, Crow's off the front lines, Crab's the only threat, Crab gets stunned out, assaulted directly, the commander gets destroyed, these wind generators get destroyed, everything gets wiped out as the wind generators in the back are getting destroyed, the commander gets wiped out. Yeah, maybe you're donating a bit of metal, but the point is essentially to make it a final push on both sides. At which point, Ball of Doom loses. So you donate metal, but Ball of Doom loses the game. As opposed to now, where you've donated a bunch of metal and Ball of Doom is in an advantageous position. Like, especially since there wasn't much being reclaimed by the Caretaker. What? Urchin? That, that was, uh, that was a misclick. They meant to build a Caretaker, not, or either a Caretaker or, or I guess a Hacksaw. Not an Urchin. You wouldn't build an urchin on this map. It's not a sea map or a mixed map. I mean, yeah, there's water in the sides, but that doesn't count. So 
So yeah, at this point, there's really no position to work from. Like, that position's long since lost. Orphelius, their economy is nowhere in the position it needs to be. Ball of Doom's commander is reclaiming like mad. Got a Dante going. I mean, Orphelius has just about lost this for basically being way too conservative about their play. I think that really is what it comes down to. Because, like I said, even if he didn't want to go for the risky commander strategy, building a Wavern... I mean, they built a Crow. If you build a Wavern, or two Waverns, get rid of the commander directly, that would be it for the Crow. Because it has no repair. Pounding on the front lines directly, trying to break through it when you're dealing with crabs and crows and everything is not going to work. But it's hard to identify the situation. That's the thing. It's really hard to identify when you're going, oh, I've got to go for something different rather than just pound on it. Maybe I pound on it enough, it'll die. Anyway. At this point, the crow is basically pushing the line. I mean, crab's pushing the line. Crow putting enough pressure to present, prevent any assaults from getting in. And nothing to really break it. How would Wavern die? Wavern wouldn't die in time. Two Waverns would get rid of the commander. That stops the repair. That means the crow dies. That means you can easily break through the crabs. Everything falls down like a house of cards. Like, that's the entire point. Because there are enough Vandals that Cranes can't do anything. They die. Okay, not a bad idea with the bandits to the side, but way too late for that. If that had happened five minutes ago, instead of, say, the Commander Morph thing I was talking about... Because that was just opportunistic. I mean, if bandits coming into the side... Would have been a bit of split of forces, but... Yeah. Would have been probably enough to also just distract the Crow. And force everything back. Less metal donation, too. Is that... That's a Bantha. You don't see Banthas in 1v1. This was a weird game. But yeah, the Commander Morph thing was purely opportunistic. As a general rule, no, Commander Morph wouldn't be a good idea. In that one situation, I think it would have worked. Bandits would have been a good idea too for the amount of metal. Like, build up a bunch of bandits, send them over, smash everything up. Would have also worked. But the point is, get behind their lines, distract them, split their focus, and then at that point, everything falls down. The bandits got killed because there were a bunch of brawlers behind them. The brawlers were not there 10 minutes ago. The brawlers were not there when I was talking about the Commander Morph thing. Nothing was there. It was Crow, Crab, Commander, and a couple spiders around. A dozen bandits running in there. Yeah, they would have died eventually, but they would have distracted everything, taken things apart, opened the front line up, and then it would have just been a matter of pushing in. While the Crow's out, the front line's open, the Crab's the only defender, and the Crab's stunned out completely. Like, totally disarmed. Get past that. There weren't very many spiders back here at the time. Anyway, I'm just arguing with Orphelius in chat. I don't know why I'm doing that on here, but yes, it, that... Attacking the front line, Ball of Doom had their front line secured. The only option would be going around, away from the front line. Going directly to the front line, I realize that's tempting because you have all your forces there, you don't want to drop the contain. But at the same time, it's... There's no other real way. Or, like I said, take out the commander with nukes or Wavern or something. They actually get rid of the commander easily. Anyway, that was that game. Air didn't prove to be useless. Air got you all the information you needed to get your economy on track. Or if it is, this air was awesome. Or if it is, this air did a great job. I mean, it got rid of the cranes. It opened up the expansions. It kept Ball of Doom honest. Given what happened in the last game... Vandals did a good job, but Air really started that. Like, that did well to keep Ball of Doom honest. If it weren't for that, they would have just expanded across the entire map, then fortified it, then had a bunch of Banshees, then transitioned over. I mean, you... Orphelius hit Ball of Doom right as the transition to Rapiers was happening, which really put a lot of pressure on Ball of Doom, giving Orphelius the map. Like, that scared Ball of Doom. It just, there was no follow-up. The crow was enough to stop it, and then there wasn't enough pushing. 
which is a bit of a problem potentially with shield bots. I'm a bit surprised there wasn't a push beyond this front though. But I guess going uphill is not a good idea in general. Anyway, that was that. So, moving on to the... Sorry. Uh, I don't know why, but it always takes forever sometimes when I alt tab out of 0k okay for it to just not... for it to switch context. I don't know why that keeps happening. It's so annoying. Anyway. Regardless of that, last match is going to be a 2v2, because, like I said, there's a tournament next week. 2v2 tournament, Sortel's doing it. Go to the forums next Saturday at 10 a.m. UTC. I'm gonna have a match to, I guess, showcase a bit of 2v2, because I haven't, I don't usually do 2v2 except for tournaments. It's gonna be Rara North Chilean G versus Adam2 and Arteries on Red Comet. That'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned for that.